Let's look at uh, reels.env. Uh, you can get your environment uh, like this. And if I say uh, rails.env.test, it's going to tell me it's false. If I say it's dot development, I'll get true. So um, have you ever wondered why you can type these predicate methods like development question mark and test question marks and don't have to do something like rails.env type equals test. Um, that's because of a little innocent class called string inquirer in active support module in Rails. And we're about to see why those predicate methods work. And in the process, we'll see an example of a method missing and a few other dynamic or metaprogramming concepts in Ruby, uh, including creating uh, instance variables and methods at runtime. So let's open up this uh, string inquirer class uh, in active support and see what it looks like. So here is the string inquirer class. We can see that it is a subclass of string and it's part of the active support module. It has this um, method missing. Um, so let's uh, do a quick review of how method missing works in, uh, in, in Ruby. Uh, so in Ruby, whenever we call a method on an object, uh, the, um, uh, the interpreter looks for that method in the objects class. If it doesn't find it, then it goes up the objects ancestor chain uh, and looks for the method um, all the way up to uh, a class called basic object. Basic object is at the root of Ruby's class hierarchy and it has an instance method called method missing. So all objects in Ruby inherit this method called method missing. Uh, and this method will be called if uh, the method that we are calling is not found in anywhere in the ancestor chain uh, of the object. Uh, so let's just see a quick example of if we just do string dot ancestors, we will see we'll get an, an array of all of the classes or modules that are in the ancestor chain of string. Now this list is a little bit longer because we are in a Rails console, but if we're an IRB, we will see just uh, five. Uh, four or five um, items in that list. Um, so cool. So let's go back. Actually, let's see how this uh, active support string inquirer uh, works before. Let's play with it before we actually look at the code uh, and see what it does. So let's create uh, a active support string inquirer object and we'll assign it a string or well, we'll start with a string um, apple. So now um, fruit is an active support string inquirer object and if now we can say is fruit apple if we if we ask it that question it will tell us true is it orange it will say false. Uh, in fact if we type anything other than apple it will say false. So you get the idea. So that's all there is to that um, functionality of string inquirer. But how does it reply correctly to um, any uh, a random predicate method that we call it on? So let's go back to the source and uh, see what uh, it's doing. Uh, so string inquirer is a subclass of string and it has a method missing. Uh, so with method missing, it will try to catch all of the methods that are called on that string that end with a question mark, so all predicate methods. Uh, and all it does once it catches that method uh, is it compares uh, self to the method name without the question mark. And now remember, we are inside of a method call here. Uh, and so the value of self inside of a method call is the um, object that the method was called on. Uh, so in this case, self is um, apple in, the, in our example, uh, it's a string apple, and we uh, compare that to uh, the method name, which without the question mark, which would be apple, and we'll return uh, the, the result of that comparison. Uh, now, if the method name that we are calling does not end with a question mark, then uh, we call super. And that's important because we don't want to catch all methods. We only want to catch uh, the predicate methods. And we can see that uh, here, if we type fruit.grow, no question mark, 
uh, we do want to get the no method error if we call any other method that we um, are not intending to catch. So if we go back to the uh, stream inquirer code, we see there's something else called respond to missing, and that's also important. I'll come back to that one. Um, but for now, we know everything we want to know about string inquirer class in order to see how rails.env uh, is using it. So let's take a look at, at the place in the Rails source code where we are using um, string inquirer or where we're setting rails.env. Um, so here is in rails.rb in rail ties, um, we have uh, env equals and the env, which is, which is how we read and write the environment values uh, in rails.env. And here we are seeing something different than string inquirer. We see uh, something called um, active support environment inquirer. Uh, we haven't seen that yet, but I bet it's a subclass of string inquirer. So let's take a look at this environment uh, inquirer. I think I have it open. Yeah, here it is. So environment inquirer is a subclass of string inquirer, which we already saw, and it's part of active support. And this one actually is not using method missing, but not to worry, we have some uh, even more interesting uh, dynamic programming concepts here uh, to go over like instance variable set and uh, class eval. So the reason it's not using uh, method missing uh, in this class is because of an optimization uh, that, let me close this, an optimization uh, uh, for uh, the fact that we know that we are going to have these specific strings for environment, environment names and not any random strings. So we don't have to go through the slower uh, delegation through method missing. Uh, so what we are doing here is that we are dynamically creating uh, three instance variables. Um, so for each of the value in this array up here, uh, we are creating an instance variable called uh, development, uh, test, and production. And we are setting it to uh, the value of this comparison here. Then we are dynamically defining uh, three instance methods. Um, so whenever we use class eval, it is like opening up the class um, and adding methods to it. In this case, the class that we are opening up is the class that we are already inside. And we are going to define uh, dynamically at runtime the method um, test question mark, development question mark, and product production question mark. And all that method is doing is actually returning the value of the three instance variables that we created up here, the, the matching one. Oh yeah, and so uh, two more things uh, of interest to note in this file is that uh, this in question mark is a method on string, um, just for checking uh, the inclusion of a string in an array. And we can just call it like this here because we are uh, inside, it says the environment inquirer is a subclass of string inquirer, which is a subclass of strings. So we're looking uh, at a string here. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out in this file is this line uh, with uh, this here doc with file line. Um, so I think what that is doing is that it's allowing the debugger to know where this method is defined. So if something goes wrong, uh, we can point to this file name and line number uh, to help us out. So that's it. We've gone to the bottom of this um, code exploration, and uh, now we can see exactly why uh, rails.env.production um, question mark and those uh, predicate methods work uh, is because of this environment inquirer class specifically, and which is a subclass of string inquirer. Uh, which is a subclass of string. There's one other small thing I want to point out before we go to the um, uh, respond to missing, which I said I come back to. Um, so in um, in string, active support um, core extensions also opens up string class and adds this inquiry method. Uh, it's just a way of getting a string inquirer object when you have a string. Uh, so it works exactly, I mean, we just have the comment here, so I won't go to the terminal to, to look at it, but uh, you can say env is equal to production, the string dot inquiry. Now we have the env is a string inquirer object, and then we can just say env dot production question mark, env dot development question mark, etc. 
So one more thing uh, before we wrap up is that I should I, I said I would come back to respond to missing in the string inquirer class um, before we explain why that method is needed. Uh, let's go um, play with this fruit string inquirer object that we have. So uh, we know that in Ruby we have uh, duck typing, so we can ask any object if it responds to a method. So we, we're going to ask fruit, hey, do you respond to apple? And it is going to say true. It does. If we ask it, do you respond to um, grow? It will tell us no, I don't know about grow. Um, so that is correct. But the only reason it's responding correctly is because uh, we, over, we are overriding the respond to missing method. Uh, if we don't, then uh, the string require object has no idea that we we catch these um, predicate methods and respond to them in method missing. So let's go back to the string require. So so all that respond to missing is doing is checks if the method ends with a question mark and if it does, it it knows that it responds to it. So that's all. We can go back to the terminal one more time and uh, go back to our rails.env. Uh, and we can see it's a development and then we can test if it's a development. Cool. Uh, one more thing to confirm is that let's look at the class of this object with the class method and we can see uh, if I could not leave out Rails. Okay, so if we look at the class of Rails.env, we see that it is in fact the active support string inquirer that we saw. So beautiful now, but also it's just a tiny little feature, but in this tiny little feature of active support, we used many metaprogramming concepts. Uh, we saw method missing, of course, and we talked about method lookup and the ancestor chain. We've talked about the value of self uh, inside of a method call. And then we saw uh, methods like instance variable set and class eval and see what that's doing. And of course we saw the respond to missing. So in general, it's a good idea to override respond to missing anytime we override method missing so that our objects don't lie to us. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this guided tour of some active support code.